today on Alaskan Ballistics, my top five choices of hunting ammo. Okay, many of you requested this video after my top five worst. Got a lot of hate on my top five worst. People seem to love ELDX and SSTs, even though it's been proven if you hit bone, they will shatter. I'm going with my top five best here. A lot of these bullets are very similar. Let's take a deep dive into it. First, I got some honorable mentions, so it's like a top eight, if you will. I'd have to say no number eight would be the Norma Oryx bullet. And this is just a wonderful bullet that was not accurate out of my gun, but of course that doesn't mean it won't be out of yours. Every gun lights a different thing, every rifle lights a different ammo, and I've got one round left. You can see right there, I don't like the fact that it's just like a truncated point, it's not a spire point. Which is probably better for like penetrating a bear here in Alaska, because this is actually a really powerful load for a 156 grain bullet. I was getting over 2800 feet per second. And 6.5x284 is, you know, an awesome caliber. So I really like that bullet. Uh, they are available for hand loading. I just wish they made it in a spitster point. Someone in the comments said they did make it in a spitster point one time. So if you know what that is, please send me a link on Instagram or something like that. I know YouTube will delete the comment if it's a link in the YouTube. And I can get it if you know a better bullet than that made by Norma. My next one would be the Acubon Long Range. Also honorable mention, so this would be like number seven. And it's just an awesome bullet as well. You can see right there, this is also 6.5x284. Uh, this is the only stuff I could get. Not as accurate for me as the actual Nazar Acubon in my rifle. These perform well. They could be number one on somebody's list. They keep their weight at short distances and expand at long distances. Um, I just haven't had a real accurate load with them out of any of my rifles in the factory or my 270 hand loads for that matter. But I am going to try the 270 hand loads more and if I can find these, eventually I'll probably load them in 6.5 PRC or 6.5 by 284 or 6.5 Creedmoor. So that's that. Number six, my third honorable mention, if you will, would be the GMX by Hornady. And it's just got good bullets. Here's a 30 caliber bullet that we did on one of our videos. I have a 270 bullet in here as well. And just a great, great bullet, GMX. The main criticism of these, I don't get them to be as accurate as a lot of other loads. And secondly, that's just me, my rifles. Secondly, these won't expand at longer velocities. So I need to download some of these and see how they really expand. Very rarely have they actually lost their pedals when they were going over 3,400 feet per second in this 100 grain 270. Yeah, that's when it lost its pedals. I kind of loaded these for fun, but that would be still be an awesome deer round. It would penetrate. It would probably still go all the way through the core wood and it would lose its pedals and deliver a lot of energy. So it'd still be a pretty good deer round, but we still want something that goes all the way through, drops the blood pressure, but delivers as much energy as possible. You want the best of both worlds between penetration and expansion, not just something that goes in and blows up the lungs. Just like the last video, we are talking about large game animals here in Alaska and in the lower 48. So your biggest like Wisconsin, Iowa fed whitetail deer would be like the absolute minimum animals that we're talking about. We're not talking about your average doe in Alabama or your average doe in Tennessee or someplace where the does are a little smaller. We're talking about large game animals, a big five and a half year old buck and rut up to caribou because that a cow caribou is still bigger than that five and a half year old buck and rut. So something to think about here. So that is what we are talking about. Just like in the last video, I got so many comments on what they did to deer and deer wasn't the subject of the video, but these are going to do fine on deer. All of these will do fine on deer. But they will also do fine if you're hunting deer in a place where there's grizzly bear or you're hunting a deer in a place where there's mountain lions and cougars and black bears and stuff like that that can come get you, lions and tigers and bears. Oh my. Anyway, that's my honorable mentions, the Norma Oryx, the Nosler Acubon Long Range, the Hornady GMX. 
Let's get into number five for the top five, and that is the Federal Fusion. It is a bonded soft point. This is probably your best, like, non-premium bullet if ammo prices ever get back down. This would probably be the best. These perform well. Really like how these perform. And I don't like that it's a small primer case, but that's just me. I've not had these perform badly in any caliber we've tested on the channel so far. Of course, we've only done 7mm 08 versus 6.5 Creedmoor and a 243 video on these. So hopefully we'll be able to find some more Federal Fusion. It just makes a nice flower every time, nice expanded bullet every time, retains 60 to 70, sometimes even more percent of its weight, and it does a really good job at penetration. So you're going to get all the best of both worlds. The reason why it's number five, BC is not exactly that high in these, but there are people that make two and three and 400 yard shots with these. So if you've had a longer shot than that, put it in the comments. These are extremely good, extremely good rounds. I have a whole separate video on these. I would hunt with these with for brown bear, especially in my 7mm Remington Magnum, though I'd probably go with my larger 338 Win Mag for brown bear. These are the terminal scent. I've got some of these in 270 to hand load as well. I've got a whole video on this box of ammo. <laughs> I've only got 11 rounds left. I should have bought two boxes of these to test. Oh, 12 rounds left. Look at that. But these are just awesome. Expand extremely well. Sometimes they'll lose their, their petals. A blue translucent tip there. It's kind of cool looking. They have a high BC for their weight. They have a good weight retention for a lead core bullet. And they just do an awesome job. As you can see, the box says they're supposed to initiate expansion, expansion at all distances. And close weight range weight retention, it does do that. And uh, that's one of those things. They, they claim lethality out to 1,350 yards. This box is one of the few boxes of ammo that gives me one MOA or better at 100 yards. And that was actually in negative five degrees with me shaking. So I uh, definitely think that um, this would be extremely accurate ammo, especially if you could get good hand loads, if you could get the bullets right now. And of course, you can't get the bullets right now. But if you see these for your caliber, don't hesitate to pick them up. Like, I believe this type of bullet would kill anything in North America. And it does make a humongous mushroom and does a nice job. Now, this is hard to beat. 1951 technology, been around forever. The Nosler Partition. 250 grain partition. I have seen what these personally do to a grizzly bear. They are just awesome. And you can't hardly beat this. The design of the bullet, most of you know, has a cross piece going across the bullet. Here, I'll show you. So there's a... If you look at the section of the bullet there, there's a cross piece against it. The lead expands down to the cross piece, and then it retains the back of the weight. It will sometimes lose lead and weight off the top. That's kind of how they're supposed to go. I've got several videos of these on the channel, some in 338 Win Mag, like right here, and some in 25 odd 6, and some in 270. Awesome bullet. Again, took my first grizzly bear with this ammunition right here in my 338 Win Mag. You can't beat the 1951's technology of the partition. They're only number three because of low BC. Like, they're not going to be extremely great at long range. I don't get them to shoot better than MOA. Like, if you get Nosler Partition to shoot less than MOA, you're doing really good. That's me personally. You know, I've 1.25 MOA in the 270, and I've gotten just at MOA in the 338. Now... <laughs> This 338 here is expensive stuff, and they've actually changed like the formula of the bullet, where one is a lot more rounded now than it used to be. So they've actually changed the design of the bullet from lot number to lot number. These are both 250 grain Nosler partitions. This one was very, very accurate for me, getting my MOA groups at 100 yards. And I actually got 1.25 inches, only two shots, because I didn't want to waste my $3 a shot ammo. But I got 1.25 inches at 300 yards with this stuff. This stuff is all over the place, and I think they changed it. They the really the bullet design really hurt that, uh, changing it to a flat nose design. And these are both coming from Nosler Trophy Grade 338 Win Mag, as you can see there. I mean, those are both coming from the partition. So definitely something you want to keep in mind is buy all the lot numbers you can if it's a good lot number for you. Buy all the boxes you can of that lot number. Otherwise, it may not be 
the same. And our next ammo, Barnes, is actually kind of bad about that. Their they're lot numbers chronograph totally differently and are often in different spots of when it comes to point of impact. So be careful with that with Nosler Petition. Still 1951 technology, great bullets. I can't recommend enough the Nosler Petition. And it is just an awesome, awesome bullet. Next, we have the tipped TSX. The tipped TSX has done awesome for me in all of my tests. It is probably the most used bullet in Alaska. And it can be used on everything from, you know, caribou to grizzly bear to sick of black eel deer on the small end to musox and bison. People use it all the time. It's probably the number one bullet used in Alaska right now is the tipped TSX. I've got many videos on how well these perform. I'll show you some individual bullets here. These are 30 caliber 165 grain bullets. Perform really, really well. All right. Uh, they do really well in 338 Win Mag as well. Performing nice flower opening bullets. So 225 grain. There we are. Great stuff. And I have some bullets here. Here's a 270. You see it performed extremely well. Now here's a seven millimeter Remington Magnum. This is actually a 120 grain. Here's the 150 grains. I've loaded these in seven millimeter 08. Gonna produce a video on that soon. But these are just extremely good bullets. Now here's the 120 grain and it was going fast enough at 3,600 feet per second to break off its pedals. So breaking off its pedals, that is one of its downfalls. If you hit you know, really solid bone, it might break off its pedals. But unlike a lead core bullet that fractures and comes apart, if they break off their pedals, this is still going to penetrate. So even at 120 grains, this penetrated a, a half frozen pork shoulder and went through six water jugs, even though it shed its pedals. So that's going to do a lot of damage. It's going to put down your game and it's going to drop the blood pressure by going all the way through. I'm pretty proud of what that is, even though it didn't retain all of its weight. Generally speaking, these Barnes TTSXs will retain all their weight. Generally speaking, they do a great job. I highly recommend these. Very accurate. You can get these to be very accurate. My 120 grain load was like 0.3 MOA, 0.4 MOA, something like that. And I haven't tested the 150 grain load yet because I haven't got the powder I want to try. <laughs> you know how gunpowder is up here in Alaska. I haven't got that yet. Hopefully things will get better soon and we'll be able to get some more powder and some Reloader 26 to try this. Of course, I could try 4831, but it doesn't give me the velocities I'm looking for according to the load manual. If you watch my channel at all, you knew what was the number one bullet you know, for me, and that's the Barnes LRX. It's very similar to the TTSX. It will rip pedals if it's going you know, too fast, just like the TTSX, but it will expand at longer ranges. I have taken a caribou one shot through the heart. So all you people in the last video that said I couldn't shoot, one shot in the heart in a seven mile an hour crosswind, which is not a major crosswind, but it's enough to throw your bullet off at 459 yards. One shot through the heart, seven millimeter rim mag, factory ammo. I took a car cow caribou at 459 yards, my longest and best shot. My wife took one at 340 yards right through the neck. I took one with 6.5 Creedmoor last year at 288 yards. One shot right through the heart. One thing about the 6.5 Creedmoor, they do tend to deflect and not go all the way through, or they might deflect, hit the vitals and go out another direction. So that is one thing you want to think about. And these bullets are just awesome. You can see right here, very well expanded. This is actually 270 from our test. I have not found one in an animal yet because they punch all the way through while doing tons of damage dropping the blood pressure going all the way through, but expanding and delivering a lot of energy. Here's what a bullet looks like in 6.5 Creedmoor, six, or 6.5 six Caliber. I have loaded these in 6.5 by 284 Norma and gotten less than 0.3. And the factory loadings tend to be about an inch. They tend to be about MOA. And here's our 7 millimeter Magnum, or 7 millimeter. I have tried these in 7mm 08, was getting about an inch and a half, and I've got to refine those loads, but I've gotten these down to the three quarter inch mark in my 7mm Magnum, which is perfect for me. I like this bullet. Three quarters of an inch works great for me. Maybe I can get that down a little further. Who knows? 
So 145 grain. I would like to try the 168 grain, but I can't find any right now. I haven't got them to shoot well yet in my 338 Win Mag, and they don't get the velocity in my 338 Win Mag that they say they get in the reloading manual. Love the 338 Win Mag, but haven't had a chance to really get those dialed in yet. And plus, those are really expensive right now. Now, one thing I got to say, I got CLN marked on here. And that's for my personal reference for current lot number. So I bought a whole bunch of the same lot number before ammo just went scarce in rifle. I'm making sure that that's what I'm sighted in with. That's what I'm putting in my magazines. Because barns from lot number to lot number to lot number will often chronograph 150 feet per second, plus or minus, either way. So one thing about that is Barnes kind of had the standard deviation that Remington had when Remington owned Barnes. So I'm hoping Sierra will clean up that a little bit and give them much more precise powder charges now that Sierra owns Barnes. So hand loading, it would be better, but I always mark these in current lot number or try to keep up with it. I've, <laughs> I've tried to keep up with it in 7 mag and, you know, in 7 millimeter Remington Magnum, and I haven't been able to to kind of keep up with it. And I have a bunch of seven millimeter laying around that might be mixed lot numbers. So I'm gonna pull those bullets and load them in seven millimeter 08, probably dump the powder. 270 as well. These actually shot right at about an inch in my 270. And I've had accuracy issues with that Tika. It's very, very picky on the ammo it likes. So these shooting right about 1.1 to 9.98 MOA. Can't complain about that. And hopefully I can hand load these and get them to be a lot better with some 4831 or whatever powder you guys suggest in the comments for this, for a Tika. So those are my top five, really top eight. My honorable mentions, the Norma Oryx, the Nasr Akibon Long Range, the Hornady GMX. Those are all great bullets, but my top five to hunt with, especially larger game, would be Federal Fusion. It would be the Federal Terminal Sense, the Nasr Partition, the Barnes TTSX, and the Barnes LRX. My favorite bullets, if you disagree with this list, put it in the comments. If you agree with this list, tell me why. Tell me about all the game you've shot in the comments. If you're one of those snarky people that want to, you know, argue for the SST that he hits bone and stuff and shatters and the ELDX the same way, go ahead and put that in the comments too. I'll still love you. But anyway, thanks for watching. We are on Instagram, Facebook, Patreon. You can support the channel here by buying Blackbeard Firestarters with discount code Alaskan. Also, I have a discount code for Just In Case Leather Holsters, the nicest leather holsters that you've ever seen, Just In Case Leather Holsters. And I also have all of my affiliate links on my MeWe page. So go join my MeWe page so you can help me out through the affiliate links. I'd appreciate that. We're on the Reloaders Network. We're on uh, GunStreamer. And I do have videos on all of this ammo if you want to go check that out. God bless. Take care. We will see you at the range.